education through its practical application by some of our industry's most renowned educators. Keep in mind, if you are not able to join us for future programs, we record each webinar and make the video available on our blog afterwards, which is blog.wasaoms.com in the following week or two. And I'd like to take a moment to acclimate you to the webinar room. To the right of the video screen, you will see three tabs, chat, questions, and polls. To ask a question of our guest speaker, please post it to the questions tab. To chat with other attendees, please use the chat tab. And we post some polls tonight, and we would really appreciate if you would share your answers with us. It is also best to use Chrome, Firefox, or Safari browsers to view the webinar, as you may experience some slow in other browsers. We'd also like to, attempt, well, we're going to attempt to answer every question during the course of the webinar, but in the event we cannot, answers will be shared on our blog afterwards. Now for the main event. I'm thrilled to introduce our guest educator, Christina Morris. She is a licensed acupuncturist in the state of New York and a diplomat of oriental medicine, including diplomat of acupuncture and herbology on the board and board certified by the NCC AOM. Christina specializes in women's health and infertility, but sees a range of condition practice, including musculoskeletal issues, pain, migraines, anxiety, gastrointestinal concerns, and immune system imbalances. She has been passionate about health and wellness for as long as she can remember, with herbology ingrained in her heritage, stemming from her great-great-grandmother and passed down through generations of her Southern family. She has published many articles on acupuncture, herbs, and wellness. Feels education is as important com component in creating a healthy lifestyle. Christina founded Element Natural Healing Arts, located in Brooklyn, New York, in 2001, to offer a more integrative approach to health and healing. They are now the home of over 60 staff members, including a multitude of wellness practitioners. She is here to share her experiences with CBD in her practice and how it has impacted her care and her practice health. Join me in welcoming Christina Morris. Hello, thanks for having me. So I'm an acupuncturist and herbalist, um, founder and co-owner of Element Natural Healing Arts in Brooklyn, New York. Today I'm going to discuss why every practitioner should be thinking about incorporating CBD clinic levels one through five and other CBD products into their practice, as well as practical tips for methods and techniques to extend treatment efficacy and make patients feel better and how CBD clinic and other CBD products can greatly increase practice health. There's that slide, I'm getting used to the slides. All right, so CBD topicals are really simple to incorporate into any acupuncture or massage practice, especially when you're working with pain conditions. I carry CBD clinic one through five in my clinic and find it really easy to use, especially since there are five different options and you can tailor those based on a patient's pain level. The price points are pretty reasonable. Um, I typically use these topical creams during sessions to help decrease pain levels, relax the muscles, and to help decrease inflammation. Overall, people feel much better with these products, and they also want to purchase these products. So as an acupuncturist and herbalist, I commonly prescribe and recommend herbal formulas and tinctures, um, pills, topicals, plasters, and liniments based on the patient and the condition that they're coming in for. So with CBD Clinic, it's now one of those options that I offer my practice. It's, it's an easy option, especially for pain conditions. Um, CBD topicals are really easy to add into an actual treatment as well. Patients can use the tools also throughout the day to, increase, to decrease their pain patterns, reduce inflammation, promote circulation and healing. So it's nice that they can take that product and use it at home as well. So many of you are probably pretty CBD savvy. So this is going to be just a basic talk, not too technical, more based on how I use CBD as a practitioner and how it can be beneficial for your patients and your practice. So let's get to it. CBD is certainly a popular health topic right now. It's been all over the media. It's something that patients and clients are requesting. CBD can bring in extra revenue and it can be a really big seller, something to return to purchase regularly, which makes offering retail something that's pretty smart. It's a easy way to add extra income that does not necessarily depend on you or your employees physically giving treatments. Uh, it's, it's extra added income without the manual work. So it, if you don't offer CBD in your clinic, 
you should. Otherwise, people are just going to go elsewhere to purchase it. So you really should just sell it yourself. By offering uh, CBD in your clinic, you can offer quality products to your patients, ones that you know are good. So you can hand pick a selection and the products that you can highly recommend to your patients. Lhasa OMS has done an amazing job working and searching companies for us as practitioners, offering high quality products that are currently on the market. Now, all CB products sold through your clinic should have a COA, a certificate of analysis. A COA is important because that lists the chemical makeup of products, including the cannabinoid profile, the terpene profile, heavy metal analysis, and the pesticide analysis. We need to ensure what we recommend and offer to, to our patients are safe and qual quality products. We want the best for our, our patients. So I have so many people who come into my office or contact my office try to sell their CBD brands. And some are really good and some seem a little bit lacking in quality and some do not have a COA. Um, so it's, it's important to me that I know what's in the products that I'm selling. I recommend keeping it really simple and keeping it clean. Having a few top products is all you really need to start. Keeping in mind that some people pay for good quality. All the products you sell, you should be able to confidently talk about and recommend. If you have receptionists or um, staff that deal with your patients, it's important to give them a little bit of training on CBD. So that, that's really beneficial. They're the ones that are talking to your patients while they're in the waiting room. Uh, CBD, I have CBD products on the counter. So that's really easy when my patients are checking out, they'll grab a product and look at it. So it's a nice introduction to CBD products if they ever had any questions or, or wondered about them, they're right there on my counter when they check out. Um, I think that people do have a lot of questions when it comes to CBD, so proper education is really important for both your staff and your patients. CBD is a really good revenue enhancer. My practice profits $2,500 to $3,000 a month in CBD. So that's profits, not gross. Gross would be double that. Um, these past couple months have even been more than that. So keep in mind that retail is often double wholesale pricing. And as a practitioner, you should be getting the wholesale price. CBD clinic retail price range is between $25 and $90 based on the level. There are five different levels. I'll go over the pricing later on in this talk. So my practice offers tinctures, pills, edibles, and some hemp flowers. People just stop in to buy CBD products. It's nice when people come in and then they also see practice. They're like, oh, you offer acupuncture? You offer massage? I just came in because I was referred for CBD products. So it's a nice addition to add into your practice to get extra clients as well. So we make it really easy for them by offering quality products with a range of price options. CBD products are not always cheap. Now, as mentioned, my practice is in Brooklyn, New York. So laws vary from state to state. Pretty much we're allowed to sell industrial hemp CBD that, contained, that contains 0.3% or less THC. Under the Farm Act of 2018, hemp and CBD source from hemp is now legal on a federal level across all 50 states. But there are three states that I think it's a little bit murky water. Um, we have Idaho, Nebraska, and South Dakota. With that being said, I think it's probably best to avoid CBD sales in those states for now. All CBD, CBD products that I use and those offered through LASA OMS are derived from the industrial hemp CBD that contains 0.3% or less THC. Now CBD stands for cannabidiol. It's one of the many compounds found in cannabis. We naturally have the endocannabinoid system, which is involved in several physiological processes, including pain sensation, mood, memory, energy, appetite, and metabolism. CBD interacts with many receptors in the endocannabinoid system. CBD is balancing and regulating. 
when CBD is taken orally, it has different therapeutic effects than when it's applied topically. Topical application only affects the area in which it's applied. It only interacts with the local cannabinoid receptor in the skin. It does not typically get into the bloodstream, which limits its effects on the body. CBD topically interacts with the CB1 and CB2 receptors. CBD does not bind with these receptors, but impacts them indirectly. Here's a slide. Uh, you can see the CBD1 and CB2, um, dermal immune cells, keratinocytes, uh, sensory neurons, hair follicles. So they're located throughout the skin. Now, a couple things that is really important when talking to your patients about CBD. There's, some, there's a couple key points, but uh, good communication and proper education is important. A couple of the key points are CBD is non-psychoactive. CBD will not make a person high. CBD is not addictive. CBD does not show up on most drug screens, but THC, even in small amounts, may. So it's best to consult whoever whoever's administering the test prior to using CBD or to the test. So always err on the, the safe side, especially if your job depends on it. Uh, very little CBD could potentially get into the bloodstream when using CBD topically. CBD can help with pain. CBD is anti-inflammatory, and one cannot lethally overdose on CBD. Now, CBD is balancing and regulating. Dosing does vary from person to person. People always want to know, oh, what, what should I take? How much should I take? I usually recommend starting initially with uh, lower dosing, even with topical applications, and then with oral dosing, I recommend like 10 milligrams two times a day. Everyone varies so much. Sometimes people just need a little bit, while other people might need a lot more. Now, topical CBD should have no drug interaction since it does not go through the digestive system. Oral routes of CBD if you eat it or take it orally, it goes through the gut and then it has to be metabolized by the liver. So in doing so, it interacts with the cytochrome P450 pathway and that pathway metabolizes a lot of pharmaceuticals such as uh, statin drugs and steroids, calcium channel blockers, antihistamines, prokinetics, which are uh, medications that control acid reflux, we have HIV antivirals, immune modulators, benzodiazepines such as uh, Xanax, Valium, Clonopin, Ativan, antiarrhythmics, also antibiotics, anesthetics, antipsychotics, antidepressants, antiepileptics, lots of antis, uh, beta blockers, proton pump inhibitors to help reduce stomach acid, NSAIDs, angiotensin II blockers, and oral hypoglycemic agents. I use topical CBD a lot of my patients both before and after their acupuncture treatments and find that it can increase the effectiveness of a treatment. It can increase local circulation, it can decrease pain, relax the muscles, decrease inflammation, and promote healing. Personally, I think hands-on work is very therapeutic. Uh, I like to know what I'm working on. I like to feel the tissue and the area around the affected area. Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it puffy? I typically spend a minimum of five minutes of hands-on work. Sometimes I do 10 or 15. And this is a really good time to incorporate CBD into this session. As long as Patients don't mind the smell. I really like to use CBD. The smell is, isn't bad. It smells like menthol or camphor. So um, some people like it, some people don't. Always ask, be smart. There are lots of different applications for CBD creams. If you're an acupuncture, acupuncturist who doesn't really do a lot of hands-on work, okay, because you can always dredge a meridian with CBD cream. 
it's really good for, uh, it's really moving, good for stagnant chi and blood, great energetic stagnation and blockages. Let's see. Next, we have how I use it on my patients. Sometimes, often, I'll rub it on my patient's back before a patient lays down. So they'll be supine while I do a face-up treatment. So I'll rub it on their back. I have a lot, I have, my tables are heated, which is really nice. I really like heated tables. So I'll rub it on their back, then they'll lay down supine. They'll have a face-up treatment, and that'll give like 20 to 40 minutes time where the CBD can absorb into the skin. It's really relaxing. Patients are typically pretty happy with that extra kind of care and attention. And also when you're applying it with the hands-on work, who doesn't love massages? So that's really nice. It's a nice addition to treatments. So what they feel is uh, a cooling sensation and then a warmth on the skin. It's really pretty relaxing. The, that sensation helps disrupt the sensory fibers that allow the muscles to engage. So they're allowed to relax their muscles. Um, Topical application to the neck and shoulders are good for muscle relaxation. It's also beneficial, I find, for headaches. I occasionally use it on their face, um, like the temporomandibular joint for TMJ. Be careful not to get it in their eyes. Nobody wants CBD clinic in eyes. It also has essential oils in it, and I'll go over the ingredients um, in just a few minutes. So just be cautious of the eyes. Uh, feet. I am also a reflexologist, so I really like feet. So I, I often use it for plantar fasciitis, extensor tendonitis, Achilles pain, neuromas, MS, and neuropathy. Again, a nice topical take home is really great, and they can use it throughout the day. For my MS patients, I recommend that they use it on their feet at night and their legs to help with spasticity. So that's a really good um, thing to re help relax the muscles. Now, another one of my favorite applications of the CBD is knees. I really like working on the knees. I find CBD on the knees really beneficial. Acupuncture is pretty popular for knee pain. No one really wants surgery. Uh, I never ever needle into cream. Be very careful that you clean the area that you're going to needle very well um, and properly before you needle. So when I do knee treatments, definitely clean that area. But also I like to use a lot of cream on the back of the knee, like the popliteal fossa, the calf and the hamstring. So when they're laying supine, getting a face up treatment with a TDP lamp, which is super nice, and needles in their knee. Um, that gives the CBD cream time to also absorb into the back of the knee, which can help with the inflammation and pain. Another thing is menstrual cramping. Very nice. So top, I use it over the lower abdomen, and then also the sacrum and SI joint. Add a little heat, either a TDP lamp on the front or laying on a heating table, a heated table is really nice. Goodbye pain. No one wants menstrual pain. All right. So we have my athletes. Love my athletes. Uh, CBD is amazing post-workout recovery. Uh, it helps decrease muscle inflammation and pain. Recovery is the key to improvement and gains. And all athletes want improvement and gains. So I use this a lot on my bodybuilders and distant runners to help speed recovery time. I also use it on the glutes and the IT bands, the hamstrings for sciatica. I use it topically on, this, on the face, on the skin, not the CBD, a different kind of topical uh, for eczema, psoriasis, dark spots and blemishes. CBD has a range of uses and it's so easy to add it into your practice. I also love to use it with Gua Sha. Thank you, Arya Nielsen. If you have not taken her Gua Sha course, I highly recommend it. She's amazing. So I'll use it often after I Gua Sha a patient. And then also cupping. I like to use it before and after cupping. I don't, I never use that much, maybe like 
have a spoon. Like a third of one of these little spoons. So I always make sure you use a spoon to get out. Don't like dig your hand in there because that's dirty. You don't want to be dirty. So don't use that much. I use like a 44 gram container. It can last me a couple weeks typically. I don't use a CBD clinic on pregnant women because it also has essential oils in it. And it's something that I personally don't feel comfortable with. I like to err on the side of caution with pregnant women. Um, it does have camphor in it. And I think that's not, it's a little contraindicated maybe for pregnancy. I just, I just don't use it on pregnant women. CBD can also be used during massage sessions. Additional pricing can be like $20 or more for like an add-on service. The client, I have the client take a soft gel. I use the CBD Plus that I order from Lhasa because it's individually packaged, which is really nice. They could also take a tincture. The therapist uh, will massage with the CBD Clinic massage oil. So they, they do offer a massage oil besides the cream. Uh, the CBD massages enable the client to relax more during a massage, both mentally and physically. The client usually leaves feeling much more rested and relaxed. And CBD massages reduce post-massage recovery time, and the clients will be less sore the next day. People love their CBD massages. A little bit of the CBD massage oil goes a long way. We do about 148 full body massages with 64 ounces of CBD clinic massage oil. So I have the oil in small containers. So they use probably like a third of this per massage. So not that much. So it spreads out. And then they also have three different levels of the oil and I'll go over that as well. So there's a wide range of topical applications uh, that CBD can be used for. This is why most practitioners should incorporate into the practice. You can use it for so many things. For the best therapeutic value, I use both. I use oral or recommend oral and topical just to get the internal and the external effect because topical does not get into the bloodstream. It potentially might get into the bloodstream, but very, very, very little but uh, the oral has different therapeutic values. So as mentioned before, when CBD is taken orally, it has different therapeutic effects than when it's applied topically. Topical application only affects the area in which it's applied. It only interacts with local cannabinoid receptors. It does not typically get into the stream, which limits its effects on the body. Sublingual application is different. So the CBD goes directly into the bloodstream through the mucous membranes in the mouth and the sublingual vein. It bypasses the gut. So it increases the actual percentage of CBD that gets absorbed. Edibles and edibles, they do go through the gut, which takes some time. And the amount of CBD that's actually absorbed varies based on a person's digestive system. So even though you might be taking 25 milligrams, what actually gets absorbed could be like 10% of that, depending on your digestive system. And inhaling CBD by smoking hemp flowers or vaping, that takes it directly into the alveoli in the lungs, and then that goes directly into the blood. So then another application is uh, rectal or vaginal suppositories. They can be a little bit messy, but they're pretty effective with the bioavailability. Those areas have large concentrations of vessels. So that can get the CBD directly into the bloodstream. And another option is uh, through transdermal patches. Those are pretty cool. This it's a form of topical application, but it's unique because it has these permeability enhancers that allow CBD to be absorbed directly into the bloodstream. These patches also rely on areas of highly concentrated vessels. It's instructed that you place those on thin areas, uh, thin skinned areas. So that includes like the wrists and the ankles. 
The least eff effective areas are the naturally fattier areas of the body, like the buttocks and the thighs and the hips. Application to those areas just decrease the CBD bioavailability, bioavailability because of the fat. Transdermal patches are more expensive. Um, they, they can also allow a more complete percentage of CBD absorption. They do come in different strengths and transdural patches deliver CBD throughout a longer period of time. For example, Mary's Nutritional uh, Transdermal Elite Patches last eight to 12 hours and Pure Ratios Transdermal Patch lasts 96 hours. That's four days. That's pretty good. Transdermal patches bypass the lungs, the liver and the stomach. Uh, so the CBD goes directly into the bloodstream, thereby also bypassing that cytochrome P450 pathway so you don't have to worry about any drug and CBD interactions. So I'm going to show you a couple patches, which are pretty cool. There's like the reservoir patches and then the matrix style patches. So this is the pure ratios, which I, I really like, um, transdermal patches. So always wonder what these look like until I until I got some so basically the the CBD is I don't know if you guys can see like in a little reservoir so these are the ones that last four days and then Mary's new nutritionals this patch is a little bit different the matrix patch so the CBD is that the permeability enhancers actually in the acrylic tape so this is pretty cool i don't know if you can see but this is just like a sticky square and you can i hear you can actually cut it up this is 10 milligrams so you can cut it up into maybe four pieces if you need so this lasts uh eight to 12 hours and it's a continuous absorption of uh, cbd so it doesn't have to work it doesn't have to go through your gut or anything like that couple things about when CBD gets absorbed into the bloodstream. It can do a lot of great things. Decrease anxiety, decrease pain and inflammation. It can reduce chronic pain and muscular pain, arthritic pain and menstrual pain. It can also reduce nausea. CBD can help reduce the side effects associated with cancer treatments. And I know they're doing a lot of research on CBD and uh, cancer treatments, which is great. Also, it can help promote better sleep. This is something that so many people have insomnia and sleeping issues. I sell a lot of CBD products, um, oral applications. I have some like gummies for sleep. CBD is so good for regulating and balancing mood. Can also decrease seizure activity and act as a neuroprotector, beneficial for Alzheimer's, MS, Parkinson's. And I know they've done a lot of tests with how CBD actually affects the brain with Alzheimer's recently. I'll, I'll include that um, little bit of inform information later on. So also uh, CBD can promote cardiovascular health and it can help reduce acne because it is an adaptogen or it has adaptogenic properties, but it's anti-inflammatory. CBD has adaptogenic properties and it is very balancing and regulating. There's a lot of research to back up CBD's therapeutic uses, and that's really important for patients to know that it is something that backs up the claims. There are a lot of claims out there, but there's a lot of research out there too. There are over 25,000 published articles on cannabinoids on PubMed, and 2,500 published articles on cannabidiol on PubMed. That's a good amount. I personally like Project CBD um, website. I think it's a really nice resource. It offers a lot of great information about CBD. Uh, here's a good site from Los OMS and leafly.com is also a really good site to reference. Previous LASA webinars on CBD have been super informative. Chad Connor, props to him. He has some wonderful webinars on CBD. He's the co-founder and CEO of Pure Ratios. And Chloe and Bart from Radical Roots, also Brooklynites. 
uh, have some really good information pertaining to how CBD interacts with certain receptors in the body to carry out its balancing and regulating functions. And Radical Roots has Chinese herbs infused in their formulas, which is pretty cool. It's a beautiful thing. Be sure to check them out. So both Pure Ratios and Radical Roots are sold loss at OMS. I sound like an infomercial, but really, they're really great products. And Lhasa has done a, a wonderful job picking and choosing. So if you have a chance to scroll through and see all the products that they have to offer. So now, we will t I'll talk about um, the base ingredients, the different ingredients and the differences between CD CBD Clinic one through five. So CBD Clinic five offers five different uh, topical formulations and all their base ingredients contain natural emollients. And emollients are used just to soften the skin. So one, they use ones that can be pronounced too, that's good. These include organic beeswax, jojoba seed oil, cottonseed oil, and shea butter. So these emollients soften the top, the top layer of the skin. Shea butter also acts as a moisturizer, which penetrates a little bit deeper. Together, these help the CBD interact with the cannabinoid receptors located in the skin. It's important to rub a liberal amount on uh, of the cream until it's absorbed. It's just a little more effective um, for the CBD to interact with those receptors. So here's a little overview about of the five different options that they have. So CBD one, uh, these are all the 44 gram jars. So those are this size. They also have 200 gram jars, I believe. So uh, number one has 25 milligrams of CBD and lidocaine. Lidocaine is a topical anesthetic and has no smell. So it temporarily blocks the pathway of pain signals in the nerve to where it's applied topically. So that blocks the pain signal that's gonna be sent to the brain so it doesn't receive the signal. Lidocaine in conjunction with low-dose CBD is good for mild pain therapy. The other ingredients in CBD Clinic 1 are organic beeswax, cottonseed oil, emulsifying wax, jojoba seed oil, purified water, shea butter, and sweat acid. Also ingredients, easy to say. CBD Clinic 2, mild to moderate pain relief. So this jar contains 50 milligrams of CBD, camphor, and arnica. Camphor is an analgesic, so that helps increase circulation, it helps decrease pain. It's also considered a counter irritant. And those work by stimulating the nerves, um, creating a little bit of irritation, first giving the skin a sensation of coolness and then heat. So that basically distracts the brain from receiving actual deeper pain signals. And Arnica has been used for centuries for um, muscle pain as well as bruising. So CBD Clinic 2 is good for mild to moderate pain therapy. So this base formula is a little bit different. It also has clove and eucalyptus, peppermint, and tea tree oil in it. And all those are known for their pain-reducing and anti-inflammatory properties. So we have Clinic 3, used for moderate muscle and joint pain. This jar contains 75 milligrams of CBD and menthol. So menthol is another counter -irrit irritant, and that also acts as an analgesic. This base formula is the same as Clinic 2. Uh, it has the clove, eucalyptus, peppermint, and tea oil. And then CBD Clinic 4. It has 100 milligrams of CBD with camphor and menthol and also includes the same base formula with the essential oils as two and three. And lastly, number five is double number four in strength. So this has 200 milligrams of CBD with menthol and camphor so, and also the same base formula as clinic two, three, and four. It's a lot of numbers. So this formula is the most popular formula for sure. 
great for athletes, uh, joint, nerve, low back, shoulder, neck pain, sciatica. It can also help increase flexibility due to the higher amounts of CBD. That makes it a little more anti-inflammatory. It's a good post-workout option and helps speed recovery of overworked, fatigued, and painful muscles and joints. Again, this one is the most potent and most popular of all five. Price-wise, so level one is $25. This is retail. Ho wholesale is half that, so keep that in mind. Level two is $35. Level three is 45, level four is 55, and level five is 90. So I like level three and four, and of course, level five. Often um, five, of course, is the biggest seller and biggest profit, like retail wise. People want their pain gone and they're willing to, to do whatever they need to sometimes even if it costs a little bit more. So CBD Clinic also offers massage oils. We, we use these oils for our massages at Element, but I don't like the oil so much as an acupuncture because it is oily. I like the creams. So the creams I feel like absorb a little differently and work just a little better for me uh, during my practice uh, when I do acupuncture. So CBD one oil has camphor and clove oil, cottonseed oil, eucalyptus oil, CBD jojoba oil and tea tree. CBD two has menthol and clove. They're all a little bit different um, as to what kind of analgesic and counter irritants they have in it. Level two has the menthol and clove oil, cottonseed oil, CBD jojoba. This one has peppermint oil in it. The first one has tea tree, this one has peppermint, and three has camphor and menthol, cottonseed oil, CBD, jojoba, organic. So that pretty much sums up the lecture. Does anyone have any questions? Well, I want to say thank you because that was incredible and you did a great job. Um, I don't think people here would know that you don't do this all the time. So, <laughs> so really, thank you again. That was amazing. And we have some really good questions here. So I hope you're ready. Um, okay, now so I hear you. <laughs> can you hear me? I hear you. Okay, perfect. Um, so Melanie would like to know about if you have concerns about merchant accounts refusing to process credit cards for the as a result of advertising CBD online. I don't really have any issues. I, I don't sell products or, or on online really. It's all through my office when they come in. So I never have a problem when I'm running a credit card when they come in and pay. I'm not sure if that answers the question, but I never process something and ship it out. That's just not um, my, my practice right now. So Melanie, there are there there are concerns about merchant accounts refusing sales if you are selling them online, um, and if you would like to shoot us an email, um, you can send email me directly, which is J Bloom, and actually my colleague is going to put that in the chat, um, and we will get you some information on that. Um, Chad Connor has some suggestions, and we would have some suggestions as well. Um, and then next question would be about drug testing. So could you please let us know about the positive drug test while patient is taking internal CBD hemp oil? Will it cause a positive test? And then he said some patients said that they did get a positive test. And how would you, what would you recommend? So I think that for us, we have to have 0.3% or less THC and the more uh, oil that you're ingesting, the higher that can be percentage-wise that they're getting. So that's one thing to look about is, is how much they're actually taking. So I would just always err on the side of caution. If they're being drug tested, then they need to be aware of that and either stop taking it or discuss it with us giving their test to them. I think that's very good advice. <laughs> and then, uh, can, CB, uh, can CBD hemp oil cause nausea? And if, and if this particular person had a patient who complained about nausea after taking it? I do not know the answer to that. Um, but it's something I, I will look up. I've never had personally anyone complain about nausea. 
maybe some sleepiness or fatigue after they take it, but not nausea. I mean, I, I mean, if you take too much of anything or, you know, sometimes it just doesn't agree with people. So we've definitely noticed that, you know, different people have different experiences when it comes to CBD. Um, so always start to work your way up and see what you can do. Um, and then this one is about, should we be concerned about dangerous increases in serotonin in patients also taking an SSRI? So, because I'm talking about, that's a very good question, first of all. Um, there are contraindications and how different drugs are process metabolized with the liver. Uh, topicals, because they don't really get into the bloodstream, is a little bit different than oral applications. So Chad Connor talked about this, I believe. So if you haven't seen his webinar, I would highly recommend it, but I do not know the answer to your question, or I, I think he might know. Um, we'll do our best to get the answer for you there. Um, also, any insight on the safety of internal and or topical CBD in trying to conceive population as well as in that So I don't use topical application during pregnancy. I just err on the side of caution. That's a very good question. And then also with pregnancy, I know that there, there have been a lot of, there's a lot of research out there and I'm not sure if they know exactly how, how it interacts with everything. So I'm not, I don't have the exact answer for that, but I know they're doing a lot of research with uh, fertility. Good, thank you very much. Um, and then this one's actually just up for everyone watching from Diane. Um, so she had said that a pa she had sent a patient home with CBD uh, clinic level five and MOXA and the patient got burnt because they killed the MOXA. So, I think that's really interesting to share and fun. So not a question, but just a, something to tell everyone from Diane's experience. <laughs> um, back to questions, Sabina would like to know, in terms of oral CBD tincture interacting with other drugs, what are the top concerns or what would you look out for in your practice? So in my practice, I would look out for if they feel a shift or change in how they're feeling, then I recommend they get a blood test to stop taking the DD because there could be some kind of interaction with their medication. So medications can go either way. They could be too much in the system or too less in the system when they interact with other, um, other compounds that interact with that cytochrome P450 pathway. All right. And then Mary would like to know if uh, with the 0.3% or less of the THC content, would you still use a CBD product on a recovering addict? I, I don't know for sure, but I do hear that CBD is actually used to help with recovering addicts or addiction. And what is the most recommended hemp oil tincture in the market? Why? And then how can you know which internal products are good? That's a very good question. I think you might know that a little bit more because you're selling these products from love. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I mean, I know you purchased the Charlotte's Web tinctures, correct? Love the Charlotte's Web. They offer a lot of different options and the price point's really good. I think the full, the full spectrum or the full strength, the one that I like, let me see. Maybe extra strength? That yeah. tends to be very popular. Yeah, and the extra strength is really good. There's just so many different options. But I think the the lower one, the full is like $40, which is pretty reasonable. And that's also, I recommend, especially if they're new to CBD, to start at a lower dose and then work their way up if they need to. That's a big seller for my practice. Yeah, Charlotte's Web has been a big seller for a lot of people. They have a very you know big name in the industry. They were featured on CNN with Dr. Gupta. So definitely a great product line. Um, but if also if you visit our site, we also have a ton of different options in the tincture world. Um, so I mean, Functional Remedies is relatively new to us. Um, we also have New Leaf Naturals, which is very popular, plus CBD, a staple in the industry. I know that's the stuff gels that you, that you typically use. Um, so just a lot of really good options. And we'll share the, the link to the hemp extracts on our website so you can take a look at the different options. And you know, trying new things you know, is a way to explore and you know, find new products for your practice. Um, and then Tom would like to know, do you ever use the creams with slide cupping? Oh, slide cupping, I do. 
<laughs> I, I love cupping and I love <laughs> kitty oil. It, it, it goes well together. And you, do you just use the creams or would you use one of the massage oils in that situation? So sometimes I'll combine it. So I'll use a little bit of the cream and add a little bit of the regular lotion to it. A little bit of the cream goes a long way, I too. <laughs> and it's expensive. <laughs> Very true. Or it can be costly. <laughs> it's relative, I suppose. And then Robin with a no, um, roughly how many new patients are you getting since introducing CBD to your patients? New patients in my office. So I think a lot of people do come in to buy specifically CBD and then they're, um, they're like, oh, you have acupuncture. Oh, you have massage. I want to do a CBD massage or I want to, I want to start acupuncture. So it's a good way for them to come in and learn more about my office and what we have to offer. So I don't know number wise, but I know it's, it's a, it's a decent amount. So it's you're better than nothing. Yeah, I mean, so your that patients are in your offices. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, if you're getting new patients because of it, that's pretty amazing. Um, and then, oh, Vanessa is asking about. You mentioned a hundred percent markup. Is that the industry standard? So wholesale. So if something's you get it for wholesale at twenty five, uh, retail is usually fifty. So that is the standard. You double what the wholesale is. The only exceptions for what we sell that would be um, would be the really the much higher price point products. So if, you know, for like the two hundred and twenty five dollars Charlotte's Web, the suggested retail is a little lower than one hundred percent, just because it's at a much higher price point. But um, for everything else, just like you said, you just double the wholesale, and that's the retail. So it's like another job, and you just don't have to see patients for it, and it adds up without having to to do annual work. So I'm, I'm personally curious is, is, would you be able to just maybe quickly take us through kind of the journey of treating a patient with CBD? So you were saying you love knee pain. So a patient comes in and has knee pain, you know, how, like, can you kind of take me through the journey of when they first get in to when they end the treatment? Okay, so I'll do my consultation <laughs> and then I'll keep my table up usually. Uh, typically, it depends on if it's what kind of knee pain it is. So I have to figure out if I'm going to treat them face up, face down. But usually CBD, I put on both sides. I do like to start face down because with knee pain, I also like to know what's going on with their hamstrings and their calves and also their SI joint back. I'm a firm believer that when you have an issue in one area, other areas also get affected like the ankle, the hip. So I palpate that area because I like to know what's going on. And then I might flip them over and do um, some needles uh, it, while they're supine, heat that up. And then afterwards, I'll do, I'll use the CBD cream to work on their, their um, IT bands, their quads, around the knee. I might strip the spleen meridian, liver meridian area on the leg, stomach. Everyone is so different, but a lot of times... Um, Chi and blood stagnation and TB, uh, CBD is really good, and also damp B. Does that? And awesome. Thank you for sharing. And it looks like we have one more question that just came in, and it was from Robin. You had mentioned telling a story about how CBD helps Alzheimer's patients. Would you mind sharing that story? Yeah. Can I include a link for you all to, to send out because I got a link through CBD clinics today, a big research article on Alzheimer's and I thought it was really interesting. So that's why that popped up in my head, the research they're doing on that. Is that oh, okay? Of course. Um, so you can shoot that over to me. What we can do is we can send that out as an email to the whole group. So then everyone will have access to that article. Okay, great. All right, well, it looks like we might have completed all of the questions. Um, I mean, we just really want to thank you for all of your time, all of your great information for sharing this with our audience tonight. Um, and thank you again to everybody for coming tonight. Um, you know, we will share the recording in the next few weeks, so if you had to leave for any time, um, we will have that recording up. Um, we don't have any unanswered questions, so that's all good. And then we will also be announcing our next webinars um, coming up very soon. So check your inbox, and I hope everyone has a wonderful evening, and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. This was great. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.